Hello everyone. I am Sai Nandan Panigrahi, a student at the Diff Lab at the University of Calgary. On behalf of my co-authors Chang, Muhammad, Dr. Raja and Dr. Aditya, Virhans and I will be presenting our work on low-cost fabrication of epidermal electrochemical sensors for detecting biomarkers in sweat. We call this EC skin. Epidermal devices, often referred to as electronic skin or epidermal electronic systems, open up a wide range of possibilities by augmenting the human skin with electronic functionality. Recent research in HCI has explored the design and development of epidermal devices for sensing tactile input, delivering haptic input, and augmenting the body with visual displays. More recently, the HCI community has contributed to epidermal devices that can capture physiological signals from the human body. Capturing these signals offers several benefits in terms of non-invasive health monitoring. However, most of the work in human-computer interaction is limited to electrophysiological sensing and not electrochemical sensing. So beyond the digital sensing of human physiology, there are biochemical markers, which are molecules in human fluids, which can reveal insights into human health at the molecular level, which can be used for personalized medicine. The use of chemical processes for designing novel interactions is gaining recent attention in human computer interaction. These include supercapacitors that are fabricated using sustainable materials and wearable patches that can, that can show exposure to UV light through changes in color. Despite this, we are yet to see the fabrication of electrochemical epidermal devices created from off-the-shelf materials that can react with human sweat and detect biomarkers non-invasively. So what are our contributions in this direction? With commercially sourced off-the-shelf available materials, we present the synthesis of inks that are not only highly electrically conductive, but also electrochemically active. The inks formulated through our process outperform commercially available carbon-based inks and the state-of-the-art conductive pastes contributed in previous HCI literature. We also present fabrication strategies for realizing these electrochemical sensors on multiple substrate materials. These techniques are also low cost and can be easily deployed in, an, in a maker space setting. Next, we comprehensively evaluated our sensors through a series of technical experiments to measure electrochemical capability and electrical conductivity. Finally, we demonstrate application scenarios to showcase the potential of EC skin for various interactive applications. So firstly, let us try to understand how the inks were made. And for that, it is crucial that we understand the sensing principle. When an analyte molecule or a biomarker in our case lands on the surface of a working electrode, it reacts with the electrode material, which results in the electron transfer between the two. This is often referred to as a redox reaction. The prime purpose of this working electrode is to, is to convey this chemical reaction into a current signal by capturing the released electrons. Now coming to the design goals of our sensor, firstly, of course, we wanted it to be low cost, hence making it accessible. Secondly, the sensors and the ink had to be electrically conductive so that the signal of a redox reaction can be captured accurately. Thirdly, the, the ink would have to be electrochemically active uh, to interact with biomolecules present in our sweat. And lastly, uh, it would have to be soft and biocompatible so that it could sit on our skin. Now, coming to the ink formulation, we focused on four low-cost materials primarily. So for our base material or conductor, we used graphite. Uh, we used gold leaf as an additive, which helped enhance conductivity further. Now, to bind these materials, we had two choices. First was a varnish, which contains alkyl resins. And the second option was olive oil and beeswax, which created an older gel together. Hence, keeping this in mind, we had two ink formulations possible. One, which led to a flexible varnish ink, and the second, which led to the healable olive gel ink. Now, looking at the ink formulation of the flexible varnish ink, so firstly, we have all our ingredients, uh, as, as mentioned previously. Now, we start off by adding uh, our graphite. We take about six grams. If we want to form six grams of ink, we take two thirds of the weight to be graphite, which means we take four grams of graphite. 
Further, we add a varnish, which is which forms 33% of the mixture. So again, since we aim to make six grams of ink, we add two grams of varnish to the previously added graphite. Uh, now, uh, for our additive, we crush our gold leaf to form a fine powder using a mortar and pestle. We weigh this and we add about 0.3 grams of gold leaf to, to our six grams of base ink. Now to form a homogeneous mixture, we add some acetone to the entire mixture and stir it on a hot plate at 85 degrees for about 12 to 15 minutes. Now we do this until a paste is formed and thus we form our varnish ink. Now we come to the formulation of our healable olugel ink. So firstly we prepare an olugel which is a mix of an olive oil and beeswax in equal ratios. So for 6 grams of ink we take 0.9 grams of each and uh, we mix that on a hot plate so that the beeswax and the, the olive oil mix homogeneously. Now to this we add a graphite powder uh, about 4.2 grams to this mixture since we're forming 6 grams of ink that forms 70% of the mixture Next we add our gold leaf uh, about 0.3 grams as an additive which is purely done to increase the conductivity so This is added and finally we put this on the hot plate and again add acetone to form a homogeneous mixture and stir this entire mixture at 85 any excess acetone will be evaporated so that is not to worry about and we do this until we get a thick paste thick olugel ink paste so now coming to the fabrication approaches for creating these soft devices so we were able to do this without using any sophisticated infrastructure and hence uh, we present to you a new approach so these were the fabrication steps so firstly we would use a substrate uh, we uh, uh, we use three kinds of substrate that is a PET sheet and uh, uh, an Ecoflex or a silicon sheet and tattoo paper. So irrespective of what substrate was used, first the substrate would be masked using a tape. Now this mask tape would be cut using a cutter. Uh, you, uh, a laser cutter can be used or a craft cutter can be used. Now this the tape re uh, covering the reference electrode must be removed first, and on this uh, in place of this uh, we apply a silver ink. Now the reference electrode is cured in the oven for about 15 minutes at 65 to 70 degrees. After the silver is completely cured, the tape covering the other two electrodes is removed. And now we print these two electrodes using a formulated ink. And now the remo remaining tape is removed. Uh, to, and with this, we have our electrode set up ready. So using this fabrication technique, any shape of electrode can be printed. And hence, uh, we believe this technique is very, very versatile. Hello everyone, my name is Brahan Nagoria and I'm here to present the technical part of our experiments. And the first experiment that we perform is an electrical characterization to check the electrical conductivity of our sensors. And the apparatus that we used here is a 4PP auxiliary device, which is used to evaluate the resistance of electrode made from different conductive composition inks. This setup reduces the impact of contact resistance, which leads to a more precise determination of electrode resistance. And the results are shown in the table of a varnish and a oleogel based electrode highlights a clear trend as graphite ratio increases the ink resistance improves. However, a critical threshold was observed in both the cases where the graphite ratio exceeds 78 percent. The ink lost their structural integrity. But these results confirm that the inclusion of gold foil enhanced the conductivity by several folds. It is also noteworthy that the varnish based ink exhibits superior conductivity in comparison to commercially available carbon inks. The second experiment that we perform is an electrochemical characterization. And to understand the electrochemical reactivity of, of our ink, we perform cyclic voltammetry tests, where the cyclic voltammetry is a popular electrochemical technique commonly used to investigate the reduction and oxidation process of molecular species where the apparatus that we use in these experiments are standard experimental apparatus which is MSTAT 4S PICO and used in previous physical sciences research because it provides us with a 
good understanding of EC skin sensor with respect to other electrochemical sensors that has been developed by physical and chemical sciences. And the results for the electrochemical experiments on multiple substrate types and ink formation are shown here, where this figure shows the overall re results for all the inks and substrates averaged over the scan rates. The results show that all the results combination of the inks combination are electrochemically active on all the substrates, where the all inks exhibit electrochemical activity across all the substrates. The performance of varnish based, varnish based ink with 5% additive shows a superior conductivity compared to all other inks com combined across all the substrates. And hence, we use this ink for fabricating the EC skin sensor and for rest of the experiments. And the next experiment that we performed is a detection of biomarkers in which we previously experiment the focus and in which we previously focused on the understanding of the electrochemical activity of our formulated ink in the presence of in the presence of an electrochemical probe. In this experiment, we focused on the evaluating the sensor response to various biomarkers in sweat. Where as shown in the figure. We can see a clear distinction that the volumetric response of both the glucose and the cortisol, where the, where the cyclic voltammetry analysis of the sensor when exposed to glucose and cortisol compared to the baseline sweat sample without these biomarkers. There is a clear difference in the peak activation potential for cortisol and glucose at minus 0.22 volt and minus 0.36 volt respectively where a chemical redox reaction for glucose and cortisol are being modeled here in this figure. We modeled the chemical reaction of cortisol based on the prior work which used graphite for detecting cortisol in saliva. For the other experiment, we measured the sensitivity, sensi sensitivity for the other experiments we measure the sensitivity of our sensor response. And to determine the sensitivity, we expose the sensor to varying concentration of analyte and measured the corresponding changes in the sensor response. And we used corona amperometry to evaluate the sensitivity of our EC skin sensor. Where in this figure, we showed we shows the current generated for the glucose and cortisol at their respective voltages, it is not noticeable that there is a clear distinction in the current generated for each of the concentration level for both, both for glucose and cortisol. And all of our sample exhibits same similar behavior. Overall, the results suggest that the EC skin sensor can reliably detect the entire range of glucose and cortisol level present in the sweat. Demonstrated the first time the sensing of multiple biomarkers through a single non-enzymatic sensor is possible.